The Mutual Broadcasting System, in cooperation with Family Theatre Incorporated, presents Advice to the Lovelorn, starring Fibber McGee and Molly. Don DeFore is your host. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. Hello. Friends, if we could only realize it, there's a basic goodness in the world all around us. A goodness that is seen in the abundant gifts of nature and in the many kinds and deeds that are done by so many every day. And when the, where there is goodness and kindness and helpfulness on our part, we bring happiness not only to others, but to ourselves. Where there is hate and meanness and lack of moral order, we are missing the simple God-given way to happiness. Your home, my home, all homes, where there is faith in God and the daily practice of family prayer, is a barrier against the hate and horror, the crime and corruption that creep into our daily life. We need good homes in America and in the world. And when we make family prayer a daily practice, we have taken a most important step towards having a good home and a happy home. Don DeFore will return later in the program. Now, Advice to the Lovelorn, starring Fibber McGee and Molly. The time, mid-morning. The place, the living room at 79 Wistful Vista. And the people, Fibber McGee and Molly. Hey, here's an interesting item in the paper, Molly. Guy in Chicago claims he's got a dog that can talk. Mexican hairless. <laughs> that talks? Uh -huh. What does he say? Hand me the hair tonic? That's the trouble. The guy can't understand a word of Mexican. He says he read to the dog out of a Spanish dictionary, but his accent must have been bad because the dog hasn't spoken to him since. Well, uh, very interesting. Yeah, did I ever tell you about our German shepherd that used to whistle glowworm? No, that one I've never heard, dearie. Yeah, a fellow named Chris Krauss. Herded sheep on my Uncle Sycamore's ranch and used to whistle all the time. Oh, uh -huh. Oh, hey, did, did you see this test in here? Hand me a pencil. Oh, now, McGee, don't take any more of those IQ tests. Please, now, you always get so depressed when you read your score. Oh, no, this is nothing like that, Molly. This is a matrimony test. You answer these questions, see, and it shows how good a husband you are, or I am. Oh, no, throw that thing away, sweetheart. Huh? I'd hate to find out that you're the wrong husband for me at this late date. <laughs> I think I'm going to keep you. Yeah. Okay, kiddo, if you think it's permanent. It's only one thing a fellow needs to be a happy husband anyhow. What's that? A wife like you. Why, McGee, that's the nicest thing you've ever said to me. <laughs> Shucks, that's the nicest thing I ever thought of. My gosh, I've had almost 30 years to think of it. I should come up with something by this time that... <clears throat> Wait a minute, McGee, there's somebody at the door. Come in. Oh, hello, Dr. Gamble, do come in. Thank you, my dear. And how are you today, bucket shape? Fine, splint salesman, fine. How are things in the fracture ward? You still getting all the breaks? All the bad ones, yes. And business, I'm sorry to say, is looking up. Naturally, it's looking up. Your patients are always flat on their backs. Oh, McGee, don't talk like that to the doctor. Well, he's perfectly right, my dear. Oddly enough, my patients are always flat on their backs before they call me. Nobody ever spends the price of a doctor's visit till they've tried everything in the almanac first. So what? My gosh, that's your business, isn't it? Making people well. Certainly not. Giving them medicine is my business. Making them well is God's department. And don't think for a minute I don't ask him, my boy. I'm always yelping for help. I think that's wonderful, Doctor. Well, I just don't want anyone to get hurt while they're in my hands, that's all. And they won't either. But you don't look as cheerful as usual today, Doctor. Something the matter? Probably tried to do an appendectomy on a guy and found out he only had the price of a tonsillitis. <laughs> Ignoring your little friend's crude attempt at insult, Molly, I am a little disturbed this morning. I'm a sort of a victim of a broken romance. You see... <laughs> no kidding, Doc. A busted romance, eh? Huh? <laughs> what happened? Did you find out the truth about yourself and call the whole thing off? Because the way you love Doc Gamble is the talk oh, of the... Oh, pipe down, slack lip. Okay. It's not my romance. It's my secretary. She's been moping around the office all week. Your secretary, little Janie? Uh-huh. Oh, what's the matter with her, Doctor? 
She's such a nice youngster. Yeah, I thought she was about to get married, Doc. Molly and I saw her the other day, and she was bubbling over. Not anymore. They had a big argument over something or other and called the whole thing off. Oh, dear. Yeah, Jane gave the boy his ring back and told him to get out of her life. And he did. She's not happy either. Oh, they'll probably patch it up, Doc. Oh, sure. McGee and I used to have those little quarrels before we were married, no, but now... I don't think they'll patch it up, Molly. She's really washed up with the whole thing. Won't even talk about it. Doesn't help any that her roommate just got married either, and Jane's living by herself. Oh, for goodness sakes. Well, it isn't going to help the child any to sit around and brood about it. If she's really going to forget about it, she ought to start right now. Sure, my gosh. What she ought to do is get out, go places, have dates. I wish there was something we... Say, I wonder if she'd like to drop over and have dinner with McGee and me, Doctor. It isn't very exciting, but it might take her mind off herself. Right, that's exactly what the kid needs. To go places, do things. Call her up, Molly. We'll pop some popcorn, play some rummy, maybe open some root beer. Oh, now, let's not overdo it, Diamond Jim. Let's not strain the girl's nerves with too much excitement at once. I think Janie'd love to have dinner with you, Molly. Anybody who wouldn't ought to have their taste buds examined. <laughs> oh, Doctor. <laughs> now, she's very fond of you, I know. And strangely enough... I say strangely because she's a very intelligent child otherwise. Strangely enough, she has always liked little Millstone here, too. That's because she's a good judge of character, Needle Nose. Uh -huh. Although why she ever came to work for you is a mystery to me. Now, McGee, stop it. I'll call her this afternoon, Doctor. Say, can you come to dinner, too? Oh, you're breaking my heart, but I've got a medical meeting, Molly. Now, look, don't say anything to her about my having talked to you, of course. I wouldn't want her to think I'm trying to run her life for her. I just hate to see her in the mood she's in. Don't worry about a thing, Doctor. The case is as good as closed. As a successful husband of nearly 30 years standing, I feel well qualified to advise the younger generation in matters of the heart. I shall be uh, happy... Do me a favor, mm. Mastermind, and keep your advice to yourself. You just furnish the laughs. You can do that unconsciously. And Molly will furnish the food, and I know Jane will feel better. Well, I've got to run along now. Thanks a lot, Molly. Not at all, Doctor. We love having her. Sure, don't worry about a thing, Doc. Run along now. Okay, now here's the plan, Molly. You call her, see? Plan? And, sure, you get her on the phone and ask her over. I'll run down to the Elks and dig up a guy for her. I know a fellow oh, down the Oh, now Elks. wait, McGee. I don't think we ought to get her a date. After all, she probably feels pretty badly That's now. That's exactly why she's got to have dates, Molly. Go out, meet people, do things, meet new guys. You know how airplane pilots, when they crack up, always grab a plane and take off again. It's the same thing with... Here, I'll get Doc's office on the phone for you. Hand me it. Yes, but now, McGee, you should... Thanks. Hello, operator. Give me Wistful Vista, one, six. Oh, for goodness sake, is that you, Mert? Oh, dear. How's every little thing, Mert? It is, eh? What's say, Mert? Your brother. Working as a disc jockey, eh? Oh, wonderful. Playing records on the radio, huh? Riding a plow on the farm. Oh. What say, Mert? Oh, just a minute. Here's Jane, Molly. I'll go right down to the Elks. Oh, dear. Hello, Janie. This is Mrs. McGee. Yes. Oh, fine. See, we were wondering if you'd like to drop over after work. <laughs> See, the cake is iced. Table set. I wonder if I ought to get out the good candlesticks. Hey, Molly, I got a hold of him, all right. He's... Hey, where are you, Molly? In the kitchen, dearie. What is it? I got hold of the guy I was telling you about. You know, for Janie. I told him we'd eat about 6.30. Oh, I don't know about this, McGee. I don't think we ought to be making dates for Jane without asking her. She's just gotten rid of one man, you know. Exactly. She needs company, companionship, laughs. Oh, she'll love Joey. He's terrific. What's his name? Watch that cake there. Boy, does that look good. His name's Joey. Joey Wellman. Oh, he's a great kid. Terrific sense of humor. Got more gags than I have, even. Oh, boy, he'll keep her in stitches. Well, we can only hope now. Look, sweetheart, you want to help me check over these groceries the boy brought? There's the list right there. Okay. Bread, salt, string beans, 39 cents. Steel wool, 45 cents. <laughs> that may be wool, but at 45 cents, it's no steel. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> Don't you get it, Molly? I says steel wool, 45 Can't cents. Ain't funny, McGee. I'll say it ain't. My gosh, I could shear a mink and sell it cheaper than that. Mm -hmm. Butter, a dollar and a quarter. Butter, What? A buck and a quarter. I won't pay it. Don't look in your wallet now, sweetheart, but you just did pay it. Besides, it's... I'll send it back. They can't do this to me. I'll quit eating butter. That's what I'll quit doing with butter. I'm getting used to them guys picking my pockets, but when they turn me upside down and shake me, they're going too far. Those dirty privateers. No, no, are... no, McGee. I know how you feel, but don't get your vocabulary out of focus. You don't mean privateer. The word you want is profiteer. This is hardly the time for a discussion of English, my dear. And besides, what has buck and a quarter butter got to do with drapes in the front hall? The drapes in the... Oh, you mean the portiers. Portiers. 
You wouldn't be thinking by any chance of the job Uncle Dennis could have had at the Elks Club sweeping out cigar butts for $18 a week and a cap that said Portier on it. <laughs> that was Porter, McGee. Uh, huh? Porter? Porter. Oh, well, then, Dad read it. What in the first place did I say wrong? Well, you said the man that sold me the butter was a privateer. A privateer is a pirate. You said it, and if they think they're going to swashbuckle me out of a buck and a quarter a pound for but, Oh, my gosh, you got two pounds? Yeah. Hey, can I have a slice of bread with some of it on it before dinner? I'm hungrier than two... Hold everything. Here's yeah. Janie now. And we'll eat in a little bit. And look now, let's not talk about her love life, mm -hmm. McGee. Let's just be cheerful. Yeah. Hello, Jane. Come right in, dear. Yeah, come in, sis. It's awfully nice of you to ask me over, Mrs. McGee. How are you, Mr. McGee? It's well, Jane. How's the job? Doc give you a bad day today? Oh, Dr. Gamble never gives me any trouble. He's wonderful to work for. Sure. Say, I hope you didn't go to any trouble for me, Mrs. McGee. Oh, not a bit, dear. Uh, of course not. We always have steak, asparagus tips, french fries, chocolate cake, and a green salad with Roquefort dressing <laughs> and two pounds of butter. Oh, McGee. It sounds wonderful. I'll hang my coat here in the hall closet. No, 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 no Janie. Come on, I'll take you upstairs. You want to freshen <laughs> up a bit anyway. McGee, keep an eye on the stove, will you? And don't okay. touch anything. Go right on up, Janie. Okay, kiddo. <laughs> Ah, there goes a couple of good kids. That Jane would be a lucky girl if we could find her a husband like Molly's got. Oh, that's me. Well, she can't expect to be that lucky, but we'll do the best we can. <laughs> Hand me that pot holder, will you, Janie? Thanks. I'll make the salad, Mrs. McGee. When Davy used to come over, I always made salads for him, and... But that's over, thank goodness. Mayonnaise in the icebox? I set it out. It's on the sink there. I've got it. Mr. McGee loves salads, too, when I make him eat them. <laughs> Lettuce is in the colander there. You can just go right Dinner in. about ready, Molly? I'm hungry. Almost, dear. You just relax now. Watch the skillet, Janie. Okay. Anything I can do to help? Not a thing, McGee. I'm putting the coffee on now. Okay, I'll go watch her. I'll be in the living room. <laughs> He's awfully sweet, Mrs. McGee. I... I suppose Dr. Gamble told you Davy and I split up for good. I gave him back his ring. Yes, I believe he did mention something about it. Hand me the salt when you're through with it, will you? Here you are. You know, it really feels wonderful not to have anything on my mind these days. Wonderful. I, I think if a couple can't get along, they ought to find it out before they're married, don't you? I certainly do. Oh, we're delighted you could come tonight. Now that you're back in circulation, you must be having lots of dates and rushing around, huh? Oh, not me. <laughs> I'm strictly an old maid these days, and I love it. I get along fine. Sure. Anytime you have time on your hands, you'll have to drop over here and help me out. There's always something to do around this house. Mr. McGee is a full-size job, you know. I get the biggest boot out of him. I think it's cute the way he rushes around letting everybody know he runs things here. You two have a nice life, don't you? Wonderful. There was a time when I thought I'd have a life like this, but no more. Oh, you will. McGee and I have had our troubles, but they've all been happy years. <laughs> we sort of balance each other. He leaves things lying around. I pick them up. He gets big ideas. I listen. He loses things. I find them. It's never dull. <laughs> you need anything else for the salad? No, I've got everything. Hey, Molly, Joey ought to be here pretty soon. What time is it, anyhow? About half past. Dinner will be ready by the time Somebody he gets here. Somebody else coming over? Oh, didn't I tell you, Janie? I got to thinking about you being over here by yourself, sort of, kind of. And, well, I happened to run into a friend of mine downtown, so I asked him over. Well, that's... I I hope you didn't ask him just on my account, though. I mean, well, well, I, I love just being with you and Mrs. McGee. Oh, and... you'll love it even better with Joey here. What a sense of humor. He'll murder you. He may be a little hard to know at first, but he's the kind of a guy that grows on you like... Like... Like a wart? Uh, yeah, no. Joe, that's him. That's him, right on the button. I'll, I'll get the door. McGee I'll thinks you ought to meet a lot of new boys. Get out a lot, Janie. I wasn't too sold on the idea myself. Oh, I don't mind. This Joey sounds like fun, maybe. It's, it's just that I don't want any more boyfriends, that's all. I've had enough. Well, now you just do as you Nobody want. Nobody there, Molly. You know, that's funny because I knew I heard... That's me, McGee. Joey, ring the front doorbell and run around the back wellman. <laughs> That's a rib, Phil. Oh, dear. Ah, Joey, my gosh, I should have known you'd make an entrance some way. Molly, this is the guy I told you about. You should have told me more. Oh, so uh, this is the chick you dated me with, huh? Mm -hmm. Say, this lass has class. Oh, baby, you No, no. <laughs> I'm Mrs. McGee. That, uh, that's Miss Ryan over there, Mr. Uh... Uh, wellman, Janie. Uh, this is Joey Wellman. I and him bowl together. Yes, sir, and I'm always on the ball. <laughs> <laughs> How, uh... How are you? Oh, in the pink, baby, in the pink. <laughs> <laughs> Say, something smells awful good. 
Uh, what's frying, Ryan? <laughs> <laughs> you hear that, Molly? Ah, oh, Joe, you slay me. No, you slay me. Mine's got a busted runner. <laughs> <laughs> oh, pretty snappy, huh, Pappy? Yeah. Heavenly <laughs> <Generally> days. <laughs> well, uh, I hope you're good and hungry, Mr. Wellman. Am I hungry? <laughs> well, I wouldn't say I'm a big eater, but when I looked at that skillet just now, one steak turned to the other and said, It's no use, Mac. We're trapped. <laughs> <laughs> Do what? Uh... Do you have many jokes uh, like that, Mr. Wellman? Have I got jokes? Well, <laughs> I'm loaded with them. <laughs> Why, I got more Snickers than Dr. IQ. <laughs> oh, oh, no. <laughs> uh, look, McGee, you boys go on in and sit down at the table. We'll bring the food right in. Go ahead now. Okay, kiddo. What was that gag you pulled at the Elks, Joe, about how cold it was in the dining room? Oh, you mean, uh, I wouldn't say it was cold, but the baked potatoes kept putting their jackets back on? Yeah, that's <laughs> And the lamb chaps come, come in wearing two pair of pants. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. You remember what I was saying about staying single and liking it. <laughs> yes, I do. And right at the moment, I can't think of a single argument, dear. <laughs> Come on, let's eat. That's right, Mrs. Clatterhatch. Just keep giving him the pills like I told you and bring him down here tomorrow if he isn't better. Goodbye. Anyone else in the waiting room, Jane? Just Mrs. McFadden, Doctor. Her feet are bothering her again. Well, let her sit a while. She'll feel better. She's just... Uh... Oh, say, I forgot to ask. Did you have dinner with the McGee's last night? Oh, a wonderful dinner, Doctor. Uh -huh. They, uh... That is, Mr. McGee had a friend over for me. A date, he called it. Oh, fine. Cupid's little help. Uh-huh. What was he like? Well, uh, uh... Mr. McGee liked him. He... He told jokes. Great. Pretty rugged, huh? Well, I helped Mrs. McGee with the dishes and went home pretty early. Mm. It's funny how people always rush to help a girl out when she's just broken an engagement or something. Like her heart was fractured and they had to save her from going to pieces or something. Yes, I know what you mean. I'm fine. I never felt better in my life. I was in love, sure. I had a lot of plans, but I've only got one plan now. That's to stay out of love. Sure, sure. Nothing wrong with my heart. It's still beating 72 to the minute. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm going to keep it that way, too. I feel wonderful. Yes, I know. I... Uh -huh. Do I look like my life is ruined? <laughs> I've never been more relaxed in my life. All right, all right. <laughs> I believe you. But look, Jane, do me a favor, will you? What's that, doctor? After this, don't put the thermometers in the sterilizer anymore, will you? They break, see? Hey, Molly, have you seen my cigar since lunch? I laid a cigar down to eat, and I can't find my cigar since I eat. Well, I think we can track it down, dearie. Are there any Roman candles in the house? Not that I know of. Why? Well, then that must be your cigar on the windowsill. Huh? Oh. Unless Mr. Williams is burning leaves next door, and the smoke is blowing in through a closed window because That's I... That's my cigar. Thanks. Hey, have you talked to Jane today? Yes. Yes, she called up while you were finishing lunch. Said she enjoyed her dinner here last night. How'd she like Joey? I was afraid to ask. Well, don't matter. I sort of figured after I seen him together a while that he wasn't exactly her type. <laughs> Nor mine. Incidentally, did you by any chance send someone down to the doctor's office to see her this afternoon? This morning I did. As soon as I saw Doc Gamble leaving for the hospital, I sent a friend of mine up there to introduce himself to her. Mm -hmm. Oh, swell kid. Athletic type. Only guy in town that can beat me at snooker. How'd she like him? Did she make a date with him? I don't think so. She said he dropped in, but he was such a bore that she knew he couldn't be a friend of yours. <laughs> Which I thought a very naive remark. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, what happened? Well, she finally stuck a thermometer in his mouth and uh. sat him in a chair and strapped his arms down and went to lunch with a girlfriend. Oh, for the... My gosh, Molly, I thought Chester would be just right for her. What does she want, anyhow? Maybe she wants to be left alone. Oh, that's ridiculous, Molly. You know that. Gee whiz, when a girl gets left alone, that's the end. And I'm not going to let that happen to her. She's too nice a kid. Look, sweetheart, hmm? there's an old Indian saying I just made up, which goes, other people's love affair is like clothes ringer. Good thing to keep nose out of. What's a clothes ringer got to do with Janie Ryan? She don't work in a laundry, Molly. You got your similes mixed. I'm sorry. Boy, I haven't even started on this thing yet. I'll have her phone ringing like a four-alarm fire. I'll have more calls for her than... Dr. Gamble's office. Who? Yes, this is Jane Ryan. Mr. Who? Mr. Jellington. Well, I'm afraid you must have the... Oh, he did. Well, tell Mr. McGee I'm getting along fine, thanks. 
A uh, call for me, Jane? No, it was... It was another candidate for a date, Doctor. I don't want to hurt Mr. McGee's feelings, but this is beginning to get a little silly. Why that stupid little... How many so far? Five phone calls. Mm. One fella rode up and down in the elevator all morning and gave the operator a dollar to point me out to him. Yes, you told me about the cab driver and the soda jerk who took off his apron and sat down with you. Yes, and then there was a man who delivered a package and then... Oh, if that's for you, hang up. And if it's for me, I'm out. I'm going over to McGee's. Yes, I know, Doc, but don't you see, I'm only trying to help... I see that you've got my secretary in my office in a complete uproar. Put away your bow and arrow and stop trying to play Cupid, will you? What do you mean, Doc? You want me to quit? Are you suggesting that I'm a quitter? No, sir, I'm not going to let that girl down now. I've suggested a time or two that maybe she'd like to live her own life, Doctor, but he won't... Of course she'd like to live her own life. Great Scott, it's getting so she's afraid to go home alone. Every corner has some knucklehead hiding behind it with an introduction from you and an eagle look. Well, my gosh, what does she want anyhow, Clark Gable? Hey, he's not married. I wonder if I couldn't... No, get... McGee. Well, I'm trying. Gee whiz. I even sent Oliver Crampton III himself personally up there to see her yesterday. Who on earth is Oliver Crampton III? Who is he? He's only the kid that his old man owns half the real estate in Wistful Vista. That's all who he is. Got his own convertible, gets an allowance from his old man, never had to do a day's work in his life, he'd make a swell husband. Oh, fine. Sounds delightful. Certainly he's delightful. He'd have been married long ago, except for one thing. What's that? Never been able to find a girl who could stand him. <laughs> he's the most disgusting character. <laughs> hey, look, Doc, I don't want to be unreasonable about this thing. I just want to help the girl get her life straightened out, that's all. Good for you, my boy. Now, all you have to do is forget all about her and everything No, be... sir. Why, Doc, I couldn't live with myself if I let that girl down at a time like this. How you've ever lived with yourself is a mystery to me. Uh, I... These things pull at my heartstrings, Doc. They really do. I can't help it if I'm generous and thoughtful to a fault, can I? Oh, dear. I guess sometimes I'm my own worst enemy. Not while I'm alive, you're not. You're not just saying that because you admire me, Doc. <laughs> no, I'm sure he isn't, McGee. Now, this thing has got a little too big for me, though, Doc. I'm not making quite the progress I expected to. That's the understatement of the century. Yes, sir. And I need some help, and I know where to get it, too. I'm afraid to ask what you're planning now. But what? I'm going down to the Wistful Vista Gazette. Going to take this whole thing up with the Lovelorn editor. What? Oh, McGee. Yes, sir. Bess Bender, the heart mender. She'll straighten it out. Should have thought of this before. Bess Bender, the heart mender. So I laid the whole deal right out on Bess's desk, Molly. I and the lovelorn editor analyzed the whole situation. Oh, wonderful. Yes, sir. If Bess Bender's handling it, now we can let the girl alone, can't we? No, sir. Listen, we went over how Jane busted her engagement in the first place, see? And then we went over all the guys I lined up for and figured out just what kind of a guy she don't like, you see? Well, that covered quite a field, too. Yep. So finally, we figured out what kind of a guy she does like. Now, all you got to do is grab the phone and ask her here for dinner again. I got the guy lined up. Oh, no, McGee, not again. But, Molly, I told you, I got the whole thing figured out, scientific this time. We analyzed it. You get her over here. And if she don't like this guy, I'll never say another word about it. Oh, dear, hand me the phone. Here we go again. Now, you just sit right here in the living room and relax, Janie. I've got dinner all under control. Are you sure I can't help, Mrs. McGee? I haven't had much chance to fool around the kitchen lately. Gets kind of tiresome just cooking for yourself all the time. No, no, you just relax, sis. I, uh, well, I got a surprise for you, maybe. There's a possibility that there may be four of us for dinner tonight. <laughs> Oh. Oh, no, not Joey. Nothing like that. This is just the fellow that you... It's a fellow that Mr. McGee has scientifically figured out as the type for you to fall in love with, dear. You betcha. <laughs> she may as well have all the brutal facts, McGee. You betcha. Well, I, I sort of hoped you'd given me up, Mr. McGee. I did tell you I was all through with love, you know. I wish you'd believe me. You don't even believe it yourself, do you, Janie? No. Things... Well, they don't seem to be working out. I, I don't know. I get pretty... Janie, we need some help. Some real help. And when you're in trouble, all you have to do is ask God for help. He's never let me down. Just ask him. Oh, I do, Mrs. McGee, I do. I pray every night that... Hold everything, kids, hold everything. Hot dog, hot dog. Come in, come in, come in. 
Hi, boy. Come right in. Well, hello, Mr. McGee. Molly, this is Dave Nolan. Dave, this is my wife, and this is... <laughs> Davey! Oh, Davey! <laughs> Janie, honey. Oh, oh gee, I've oh, missed honey. you so. Hey, why, they, I miss he you must too, be the... oh, I've been so lonesome without you, Janie. Oh, honey, do you Look, forgive I'll me? take the flowers oh, and the candy, Dave. This is no time to be standing there with your arms full of packages. I should say not. I'll get a vase for the candy or a dish for the flowers. I mean, McGee, don't just do something. Stand there. <laughs> Come on, they probably got stuff to talk about. Yes, you can help me get dinner on the table. Heavenly day. Oh, Dave. Oh, oh McGee, isn't it wonderful? You did do it. Sure. As soon as I got the proper coaching, everything worked out perfect. Oh, he's such a nice-looking lad, too. Say, uh, does he have a job? What does he do? Oh, didn't I tell you? He's a newspaper man on the Gazette. Newspaper man? A reporter? Oh, he does everything. Some of the staff was sick this week, and he was doing Best Bender, the heart mender. Oh. So they had him writing the advice to the Lovelorn column. What? I'm hungry. <laughs> You have heard Fibber McGee and Molly, starring in Advice to the Lovelorn. Now, here is tonight's family theater host, Don DeFore. You know, I've discovered that most people have a wonderful capacity for love and friendship, for understanding and brotherhood. And isn't it a real treat to meet people who are overhearted and uh, generous, who are considerate and kind? You see, these are the ordinary duties of brotherhood. And if we fail in them, it means not only unhappiness for others, but a failure to find real happiness ourselves. And you'll find this true in all homes where every token of kindness and consideration helps to unite a family more closely in love and understanding. Every home should be a happy one, and it can be with God's help. And many families are finding a renewed happiness in their homes because they have learned the wonderful po power of family prayer, the power of God's help to keep our families together and happy. This is a simple conviction of family theater the conviction so many of us share, that we should pray for one another, pray with one another together as a family prayer, because a family that prays together stays together. Before saying goodnight, I'd like to thank Fibber McGee and Molly for their performances this evening. Our thanks to Phil Leslie for writing tonight's play and to Max Tear for his music. This production of Family Theater Incorporated was directed by David Young. Others who appeared in tonight's play were Arthur Q. Bryan, Betty White, Jess Kirkpatrick, and Tyler McVeigh. Next week, our family theater stars will be Preston Foster and Daryl Hickman in The Journey Home. Your hostess will be Ruth Hussey. This is Don DeFore saying good night, and God bless you. This series of the family theater broadcast is made possible by the thousands of you who felt a need for this kind of program, by the mutual broadcasting system which has responded to this need and by a friend of the New York Foundling Hospital, which cares for homeless and motherless babies without distinction of race, creed, or color. Join us next week at the same time when our stars will be Preston Foster and Daryl Hickman with Ruth Hussey as hostess. Tony Lafrano speaking. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.